Well, hello Internet and welcome to part 7 of my Design Patterns video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Singleton Pattern. And like most of the other tutorials inside of this big Design Patterns tutorial, this is going to be self-contained. So if you're just here to learn about the Singleton Pattern, you're in the right place. However, if you need to brush up on basic OOP concepts or look at the other Design Patterns in this tutorial, I provide a link to the first part of this above. So what is a singleton pattern? It is used when you want to eliminate the option of instantiating more than one object. You're going to create a class and it is only ever going to be able to create one object from that class. Now you might ask yourself, well when would I actually want to use something like that? Actually a lot of times. In this part of the tutorial I'm going to demonstrate using a class that's going to hold all of the potential Scrabble letters. And Scrabble is a pretty common board game so I thought you would make a lot of sense here using this. And what it's going to do is it's going to hold all these potential Scrabble letters so that all the users that want to use this object can access those letters. However, it's also going to spit out new ones upon request to all the different users. Now why the single room pattern makes this great is each player will share the same potential letter list. However, each player is going to have their own set of letters to create words from. So the singleton pattern makes a lot of sense in this situation. So on to the code. So I'm just going to come in here and create my class and I'm going to call it Singleton. Now you absolutely don't have to do that, but in this situation it makes sense. And like I said before, a Singleton pattern is just going to force you to only have one instance of a class created. And then this guy, private static singleton first instance, is going to hold the one and only instance for the class Singleton. So this guy is going to be the access point for any object or the one object that's going to be created from this class. And it is static in this situation because objects like this will almost always need to be available on a global basis. So that's the reason why that is set as static. And then we're going to come in here and go private singleton and make the constructor class private. And the reason why we're doing that, once again, is to make sure that there is only one instance for the class singleton. And that is the reason why we're going to have that be private, because if they try to create a new one, it's just going to create an error. And then what we're going to do is go public static singleton get instance. And get instance is almost universally used as a method for the singleton pattern. And basically what we're going to do inside of this guy is check if first instance is equal to null or whether it exists or not, which means it wouldn't be null if an object was created for it. So we're checking in that situation. And if so, we're going to go first instance is equal to new singleton, right like that. So the only way they're going to be able to come in here and create a new singleton object is if one doesn't exist already. And that one would be stored in this field up here. And this right here is known as lazy instantiation. And what that basically means is if the instance isn't needed, it is never going to be created. So the only way it's getting created is if get instance is called. And then after we're done with this, we're going to go return first instance. So you can see right there that something's going to be returned every time if first instance already exists and they try to create a new singleton object, it's going to return the one that is already created. Otherwise, it is going to create a new one. So there it is. There's a singleton pattern. However, we're not done because there is one thing that is always covered with the singleton pattern and that is basically what are we going to do in the situation where we are dealing with threads, which could potentially create more than one object, whether we try to block that or not. So this guy, I have to implement my little Scrabble thing that I talked about before. I'm going to go import Java utility, and I'm going to need the arrays library and the collections, which I'm going to use to jumble up all the letters that are going to be stored inside of a linked list. So that means I'm going to need linked list. And I'm actually doing this also because I've received a bunch of questions in regards to arrays, collections, and linked lists. So I try to cram multiple tutorials into one. So what am I going to need to do here? Well, after this guy right here, I'm going to need to come in here and actually get all of my potential Scrabble letters. Well, I have that saved elsewhere, so I'm going to grab that. And here they are, and I pasted them in there. And that is all they are. Those are all the potential letters you can have inside of the game of Scrabble. And I didn't see any reason to type those out, but I'm going to clean them up a little bit. So there you are. That's what we got right there. Just a whole bunch of letters. Then after that, I'm going to go private linked list and I'm going to store all these letters as strings and I'm going to call them letter list. And this is going to be equal to new linked list again string. And then I'm going to take all of the letters in this array that we have right here and I'm going to throw them into the linked list. So we're going to go arrays wondered how to do that you just go as list and inside of that you're going to type in scrabble letters 
So that is a question that I recently received, how to get a array of things inside of a linked list, and now you know. And all the code is available underneath this video if you want to go get it. Then what I'm doing, because I'm gonna be working with threads, is I'm gonna create a static Boolean. And the first thread that is going to be created is going to be slowed down so that there is the potential for a second thread to come in and cause masses of disaster. And that is exactly what that line is going to do there for me. And then we need to come down inside of this guy and start creating some disaster. I'm going to say if first thread, which is going to be true, then I want to perform some things that are going to slow down my thread. So I'm going to say first thread is equal to false. I'm going to change it back to false. And then I'm going to go thread current thread and I'm going to cause it to sleep and what this is basically going to do for me is going to give the other thread that I'm going to be creating the opportunity to cause mass disaster and if you scroll in here you're going to see it needs a try catch block so I'm going to say surround with try catch block save myself some time and everything else here can be exactly the same however I'm going to come in and create a whole bunch of other different methods inside of here that are going to work with these threads to create our little Scrabble game that we are going to be creating here. So I'm gonna go public. And what this method's gonna do is return a list of all the available letters. So I have all those letters in a linked list and they are all strings. So I'm gonna call this guy get letter list. And what's it gonna do? It's, this is how you would return fields inside of a singleton. You're just gonna reference letter list in that situation. Nice and simple. So let's create a couple more methods here. I'm gonna create this guy and it's gonna get tiles for my player. So it's going to return a string linked list and it's going to be called get tiles and it's going to receive an integer that's going to say how many tiles do you want. And then I'm going to create another linked list, tiles to send, it's going to be equal to new linked list. And if you want to really, really understand this, you definitely should get the code. Almost every single time I get an error from one of you guys or not understanding why something is done a certain way, it is because the answer is in the code, but you didn't see it. And then we're going to cycle through the linked list while adding the starting strings to the list that's going to be returned to the user. And then at the same time, we're going to delete them from the beginning of the list. So to do that, we go int i is equal to zero. We're going to start at the zero index. And we're going to go, well, i is less than or equal to how many tiles they requested. And then we're going to increment. So no big deal. We go tiles to send. So tiles to send is going to be going back to the user. So if they say, hey, I want seven tiles to start my Scrabble game, it's going to kick back seven letters and then chop those seven letters off of the linked list so that nobody else gets them. How do we get those guys? We're going to go first instance, letter list, and we're going to remove. And you would have thought I'd put an I in there, but a no, I'm going to put a zero. And the reason why is whenever you call remove, it is going to chop off the zero index and then move everything from the right over to the left. So next time through, what is in the one index will now be in the zero again, and everything's just going to work out perfect. And then after it goes through all this, it's going to go return tiles to sent. And that new array is going to be sent back to the function that called it. All right, so everything's set up there. So now we're going to go into Scrabble test Java, right like that. And we're going to start playing around with this guy. So what are we going to need? We're going to need import Java utility. We're going to need linked list because we're going to be playing with linked lists again inside of this guy. I'm going to go public class, Scrabble test, public static void main string because we're going to be executing everything from inside of here. Anytime you see main from now on in my tutorials, that would, that's exactly what it means. So we're going to go singleton new instance is going to be equal to singleton. And we're going to go get instance. This is part of the singleton pattern. And that is how you're going to create new instances of the singleton class, right like that. And let's say we want to print out a unique ID for all of our instances that are going to be created. I'm just going to go instance ID. And if you want a unique ID, you're just going to go system identity hash code. And what are we going to put inside of here? New instance, which is the name of this guy is going to be created for us. And that way we'll be able to track whether we are dealing with the same objects or whether we are dealing with different objects, which is important. And this also helps you with debugging and a whole bunch of other different things. So then what are we going to do? We're going to get all the letters that are stored in the list and we're going to print those out on the screen. So how do you do that? New instance, get letter list, which is a method that I just created here a couple seconds ago. Flip back if you don't remember it. Of course, this is new instance. And then I'm going to go linked list. And this is going to be a string just like before, or a group of strings. And I'm going to say player1 tiles is equal to new instance. 
get tiles, and I'm going to say I want seven. We're going to act like this is the beginning of our game. And then let's say we want to print out to screen all the new tiles that player one just received. That's useful. So we're going to go player one and then player one tiles, and that's going to print out all the tiles for player one in our Scrabble game. And maybe we also want to print out our letter list just to see how it's changed since player one went in there and created that guy. And then what we're going to do is go singleton again, and we're going to try to create a new instance. This is going to be our second player, and I'm going to call it instance two in this situation. And we're going to call get instance just to see exactly what happens. And then let's say that we want to also come in here, print out a unique ID for this new guy. Let's call this instance two ID, and let's call this instance one ID. So we're going to see if those values changed just because we created a new object, even though they're not supposed to. Of course, I think you probably know the answer. Four of them are also going to show you how to break it. And then let's go and let's print out our letter list again, just to see how things have changed. And then I'm also going to copy this and print this out. There's that. Call this player two tiles. So player two is going to get a new set of tiles, which is going to work, by the way. And then there are our player two's tiles. And if we file save this, we're actually going to be able to execute it. You're going to be able to see some things here. And there are all the letters printed out, but that's kind of messy. What I want to show you here is instead of that, I'm going to go over into Singleton. I'm going to scramble these letters out so that they're not printed out all in order. Because I think that's a little bit more impressive. So I'm going to jump back into Singleton.java. And right here where we get to first instance where we created our first object, I'm going to call collections. And I'm going to shuffle first instance, which is this guy right here, so that all the letters are not in order, because that doesn't make much sense. And then this is just going to be letter list. So there you go. All I did right there is shuffle all these letters. See how this is A, 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 like that? Well, I'm going to save that. I'm going to re-execute this. And you're going to see now that they're going to be all randomized. See? Q, R. And then you can also see the user getting the right letters. So if they want seven, that's one, two, three four, five, six, seven, right like that. And you can see that they got those same seven letters right here. And then everything is moved over thereafter. And then you got all this other stuff going right there. And you can also see that the instances for these two objects, even though two separate objects were tried to be created, you can see that the same object that represents the letter list is identical. So there's that. So now what happens if we come in here and we start implementing these different players as threads? Well, you're going to see, I'm going to create a new class called Scrabble Test Threads right here. And I'm going to implement that. So I'm going to go public class Scrabble Test Threads. And we're going to get another review of threads because I get asked about them all the time. And public static. What is this telling you? This is telling you that this is going to be a main execution area. Why? Because I'm using public static void main. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and go runnable and create a new thread using the runnable interface. And this is going to execute my code for me, meaning the code for creating new instances of the singleton class, new and get the tiles is going to be the name of the class that's going to have the run method inside of it to use with this thread. Get tiles again is going to be another thread and get the tiles is going to be used again, which I'm going to create here in half a second. And then I just need to call for the code inside of get the tiles to execute. And it's pretty simple. I'm just going to go get tiles and call start on it. And there's that. And then this is going to be get tiles again and start. And that is it. So file save that and that is going to execute all of my threads. So now we need to go into get the tiles.java and start playing around with threads and see how threads can very easily and quickly start destroying things in regards to using the singleton pattern. And then I'm also going to show you exactly how to block them from doing so. So I'm going to create a new linked list or grab information from the linked list library. And I'm going to go public class get the tiles implements runnable because we're using those threads and then we need to go public void run and then we're going to go singleton and these this run method is going to execute all the code in here for both of my threads if you forgot previously so i'm going to go create a singleton object called new instance and it's just going to be singleton get instance again that's how we're going to create all our singleton objects and then we're going to go linked list string and this is going to be player I'm going to have this be player one tiles, even though there's going to be two players, is equal to new instance, get tiles, and we're going to get seven tiles, just like we did previously. And actually, I'm going to steal from Scrabble test some code, so I don't have to type it out. I'm going to come in here and get this unique ID, and I'm also going to get the letter list. So let's copy that, bounce inside of there, paste that in there. 
and then bounce over into Scrabble test again and also copy this guy right here and paste that in there. And I'm just gonna go instance ID and take player and put that inside of there. And then let's put another message inside of here. Got tiles, there we are. And we can file save that. And now we can test this guy using threads. So let's file save it and let's execute it. And there you can see using threads, what we got here is our first instance of the object. Look at that, the ID is completely different than the second thread instance object that was created. And you can also see that the list of letters are also completely different. So even though we tried to prevent it from being able to go in there and create multiple different threads and multiple different instances of different letters, which would obviously completely destroy our Scrabble game, it did go in there and mess that up either way. That's actually pretty easy though, to come into singleton.java and fix all of that, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So let's think about a couple different ways that we could fix this issue. Let's scroll down inside of here and let's come to get instance. Now we very well could come in here and change this to synchronized. Now, what this is basically going to do is it's going to force every thread to wait its turn. In essence, that way only one thread is going to be able to access this method at a time. And until that thread releases this method, being the get instance method, which is going to create a new singleton object, no one else is going to be able to create a new singleton object. See, what happened here was the first thread came in and it was told to go to sleep. Meanwhile, since it's in here, see this guy right here is checking to see if it's null. It went in here and then it fell asleep. Now since it's set as null, that means there is no object that is being created from this singleton class. So we need to create a new one. Well meanwhile, our first thread is right here. First thread sleeping. So what happens? Whenever the second thread comes in and tries to create a new singleton object, it comes through right through the front door because guess what? The first thread's asleep down here and it goes in and creates another object, which is not what we wanted to do. However, if we slap synchronized onto here, that is not gonna allow this second thread to ever get in here until the first thread wakes up and then continues on to create the new object. However, we don't really wanna use synchronized because synchronized very often slows everything down dramatically. So in this situation, I'm gonna show you another way to get the same results without slowing your program down terribly. And it's actually gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna wrap everything inside of synchronized singleton class. And in essence, what this is gonna do is this is going to force it to be a synchronized method until the first object is created. And then thereafter, it is no longer going to be considered a synchronized class. And then after this, we're going to run our same if statement. We're gonna cut that out of there, paste it in there. And then we're gonna check it for null again. Like I said, this is only ever gonna happen up until the very first object is created. And now we're gonna go first instance, and we're also going to shuffle all our letters, and then we're gonna close off everything. So now that we have that all set up, let's see if we fixed our problem. So let's execute it again. And you can see there was a pause, and there you go. So now both of our objects are of exactly the same type. They both point to the same unique ID. And as well, our letters are gonna be the same. They might look different. The only reason why is all of these letters, the first seven of them, have been replaced down there. And then those letters have been replaced down there. So there is a whole bunch of things about the singleton method as well as a review of threads and linked lists and a whole bunch of other things based off of questions you guys have sent me. Please leave any questions or comments below. And all of the code is available in a link underneath this video. Get it, it will make this stuff 100% understandable. Till next time.